Hi friends, it's time for the next part of our Easter story. Today I'm gonna to read to you out of a new book that I got <clears throat> called The Story of the First Easter. And it already has some parts of the story that we already read. So I'll just show you the pictures. There's Jesus when he was riding on a donkey into Jerusalem. And all the people were worshiping him and calling him their king and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. And so Hosanna means save us because they wanted Jesus to save them. And then Jesus and all of his friends went to have a special dinner where Jesus washed some of his friends' feet. And then he shared his food with them and he was showing them how to be kind but he knew that one of his friends named Judas was trying to make some bad choices. There he's sharing his, his drink with them. But he knew that his friend Judas was deciding to do a sneaky plan. None of the other friends knew about it because he was being so sneaky. But Jesus knew and he said, one of you is trying to make bad plans against me and I know who you are. And after that dinner, Jesus went out into a garden to pray. His friends were supposed to be keeping watch for him, but they fell asleep. Jesus was praying and asking God to help him because he knew that something was coming soon. He knew he was going to have to do a big, scary job, and he was a little bit worried about it. So Judas came into the garden while his friends were asleep. He brought soldiers with him and told them, there's Jesus, that's the one. And the soldiers took Jesus away and arrested him and they took him to jail. And that's where our story ended. And Jesus didn't want anybody to fight any of his friends and the soldiers to fight. So he just said, I'm gonna go with the soldiers. The soldiers brought Jesus to one of their kings. And the king said, do you say that you are the king? And Jesus answered, yes, that's right. And this king was not very happy about it. He knew that there could only be one king and he wanted it to be him. But we know that this king cannot save us from our sins and he cannot clean hearts. That's why Jesus is the true king. And he said, Take him away. I don't want to see him again. So the soldiers took Jesus away that day. While the soldiers took him away, they started to tease him. They started saying, Jesus, you're not really the king. You're just pretending to be the king. And we don't like that because we know that that other guy is really the king. You're not the king, Jesus. Jesus, do you think you're the king? You're not the king, Jesus. They were teasing him and making fun of him. And they said, Jesus thinks he's the king. Let's give him a pretend robe and pretend that he's the king. They gave him a very, very scratchy, not comfy robe at all. And they put it on his back and it was scratchy and hurting. Then they started to hurt Jesus and hit him and kick him. They did many evil and painful things to hurt Jesus because they did not want him to be the king. They even said, Jesus, you're not the king. If you're a king, then we'll give you a crown. And they gave him a crown, but it was not a real crown. They were just trying to make fun of him. They made him a crown out of very, very pokey thorns that went on his head right here. It made his head start to have pokes in it and he was bleeding and hurting. He was hurting all over. He was wearing a scratchy, uncomfortable robe and the pokey crown. And the soldiers were trying to make fun of him and hurt him. There he is with his scratchy robe, his crown of thorns. And there's a soldier standing right there too. And there's a, a woman there who sees Jesus, who thinks Jesus is the king. And she's crying because she's sad for him because she still believes in Jesus. 
Jesus knew that the time had come for him to take away the sins of the world, and he would have to do it by dying on the cross. That's why he's carrying this big cross. The soldiers did not try to help him. They were trying to hurt him. So they made him carry it. And it was very heavy and very, very hard to carry on his back. One man felt bad for Jesus. So he helped Jesus carry the cross up to the top of the hill while the soldiers watched. When they came to the, to the hill, the soldiers laid the cross down on the ground. They put Jesus on it. They put nails in his hands and in his feet and stood it upright with Jesus on it. And while the soldiers were doing this evil, evil work and hurting Jesus, do you know what Jesus was still saying to them? They put nails in his hands. They put, they gave him boo-boos and cuts. He has a pokey crown on. He looks very sad and hurting. But you know what? It says, even while the soldiers were doing this bad thing, Jesus was still praying to God. And he said, God, please forgive them. I love them and they do not know what they're doing. I don't know. I think they are. They do know what they're doing. I think they have very sinful hearts. But you know what? Jesus, Jesus is the only one who really knows. And he was still loving those people, even though they were hurting him. Oh, there's the city and the hill. The soldiers and Jesus' friends are up there. And Jesus is on the middle cross. And there was two other guys. <clears throat> who were stealers and robbers, they were, they really were bad guys and they were on dying on a cross too. The soldiers in the crowd looked at Jesus and teased him. They said, Jesus, if you're the most powerful king, save yourself, come down off the cross by yourself, send some angels to save you. Do you think Jesus could have done that if he wanted? Do you think he could use his power to jump down off the cross and take the nails out of his hands and he could do a miracle and heal all the scratches on his body? Do you think he could use his power to save himself on the cross? Yes, absolutely he could. But guess what? He chose not to do that. Why do you think he's choosing not to save himself on the cross? He cannot save himself while well, he's choosing not to. He could if he wants to, but he's not going to because he has to die on the cross so that our sins could be saved. Isn't that amazing? Even though he's sad and hurting and all alone, he still is not going to try and do a miracle and use his power because that's how much he loves us and he wants to save our sins. If he doesn't do this, then we have to be the ones who are on the cross, who are trying to clean our hearts, and we can't do it because we don't have the power like Jesus does. That makes me say, thank you, Jesus. Even one of the robbers who was on the cross next to him was teasing Jesus too. But the other one said, this man has done nothing wrong. We have sinned and stolen and robbed, and we deserve to be on the cross. But this man has done nothing wrong. He should not be on the cross. And Jesus said to him, Today you will be with me in heaven. Looks like Jesus is very sad and alone. Jesus saw his mother there as he was on the cross looking down. His mother, Mary, and his friends were standing nearby crying and looking up at him. This was a very sad day, you guys. Suddenly, a darkness came over the land and clouds formed. And Jesus cried out, God, God, where are you?
Jesus is all alone because God cannot be anywhere near the sins that are all on top of the cross right here. All of our sins that we ever did and all the people's sins that are next to the cross, they're all going onto the cross right now in the story. And God cannot be anywhere near it. He has to leave Jesus to die here. And he's all alone and he looks very sad. At that moment, there was a loud thunder and the earth shook like an earthquake. And one of the soldiers looked up at Jesus and he changed his whole mind. He decided, this is surely the son of God. He changed his heart. And Jesus died that time on the cross. Soon the clouds rolled away and that night some of Jesus's friends came and took Jesus off the cross and they took him away to bury him. We remember that they don't bury people in the ground in this these stories just like Lazarus they put him in deep caves with a big stone in front of it. They wrapped up his body and they put it in a cave that was inside of a big rock. They put his body inside of a cave and in front of it rolled a large stone to cover the entrance so nobody could get in. That is the end of the story for today, you guys. And that was a little bit of a sad story today, huh? That is the real story of Easter that I wanted to share with you. That Jesus had to die on the cross so that we don't have to be on a cross. That just makes my heart feel so good and it makes me want to say thank you, Jesus. I want to obey you and I love you because you took all of my sins on the cross and all of the whole world's sins, not just mine. And I could not have done that. I would not have been able to go on a cross and take other people's sins because I don't have God's power. Only Jesus could do it for us. And that's why he saves us from all of our sins. This story is not over, you guys. There is more to come. A miracle, the biggest miracle that we have ever read about is about to happen. Jesus is going to do one more miracle and he is going to show his power and show how he saved us from our sins. His story is not over yet. So come back tomorrow and we'll find out how this sad story turns into the happiest, best story in the whole wide world. See you tomorrow.